All right, guys. Here's what we're doing tonight. I got three Lennox units on top of a restaurant. It's about 80 degrees downstairs. Each one of these is near 80. That one right there. The uh, thermostat underneath it's about 78. That one's 76, 77, and that back one's about 78 as well. Uh, I turned them all down to 70. They were set to, I think, 74 or something, but I turned them all down to 70 just to make sure I'd have a call for cooling when I got up here. I'm going to start on this guy right here. Just, just because I just picked it at random. First thing I'm going to do, check the airflow with my handy dandy scientifically designed hat. Uh, I do that just real quick because it's just easier than putting my hand over it. Because sometimes if you put your hand over it, you might not be able to feel the airflow. For example, if that left fan motor is dead and that one's not, air will go through that dead fan motor, take the path of least resistance and up through this other fan. So, and when it does that, of course, it's bypassing the coil, mostly. And you'll put your hand over that dead fan and you'll feel air movement because it's going down through it as it's going up through the other fan. And it feels like it's working, but I always like to just throw my hat on there just to, just to be, just to be sure. Also, I'm kind of a hands-on type of guy when it comes to machines. Um, this coil doesn't feel really warm at all. I mean, it kind of feels like it's right near ambient temperature. Nothing, I mean, nothing at all. It's about 85 degrees out here and about 80 degrees in the store, so I should have, I should have a much hotter coil. So let's pop this open real quick, just kind of see if we can see anything. Yeah, blower's working. That looks decent. Just kind of hoping to have a better view of the evaporator on this unit, but I believe we got to go over to this side. So let's pop this open. Now it's going to be kind of loud, so I apologize for the noise, guys and gales. I don't know if my camera's picking it up, but you can see this coil sweating. So sweating a decent amount I'd say not too bad it's not froze up so I don't know if I really have a major issue with this one this unit may be fine that unit over there could be completely dead which is causing this side of the building just to warm up so before I get the bright idea of attaching gauges or doing anything further let's go over to this unit let's get some eyes on this guy Now, if you notice right there, that fan motor should be spinning around, just like that fan motor is. Put my, put my hat on there. You can kind of feel it getting sucked in as it's pulling air through here. So, that side's working. Coil is really, really hot because, because it can't, it can't get rid of the heat. Because like I said earlier, it's just pulling air in and sucking it out. So we're going to replace that motor, guys. So, back at this unit with the dead condensing fan motor. Um, I, don't have, I don't have a motor that will fit this, unfortunately. I don't have a universal motor, a rescue motor, or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to block off that condensing fan motor with a piece of cardboard. I'm going to disconnect it so it's electrically not going to catch fire or anything like that. but. It's kind of a, just an old school way of doing things just to get them by for tonight. Just put that on there. And then now, our air will no longer go through the path of least resistance. It's gonna go through our coil. Even though we only got one fan, it's not ideal. I get it, call me a hack, whatever you wanna do. But it'll get them by until we can get back here on Monday and get that, that fan motor changed out. I gotta kinda work with a sense of urgency got a little bit of a storm moving in hopefully it's gonna stay over there and not affect me at all now another thing another thing that I made sure to double check was our our starting components or our our ice cube relay rather I did verify our ice cube relay is pulled in 
I have an amp draw. I know it's hard to see on camera. It's kind of dark out here, but I got about 1.5 on both motors. Or excuse me, 1.5 on my good motor, 3 amps on my bad motor. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that. Put a piece of cardboard over top of that. And the other thing is we don't have stage 2 isn't running. I'm not real sure why. But stage 2 is currently off, so could be off on high head. We don't know yet. So, when I figure that out, I'll bring it back along. So, here is our temporary repair. Get a little bit more light on there for you. Now, I put the fan guard over top of that cardboard just to, I don't know, try to keep it uh, a little bit stable. Again, it's not ideal, but we live in a real world where you don't always just have every single part you need on your truck. So this will get them by for now. Now another thing I wanted to show you guys here. I just spotted this. We have a sight glass on this. And these don't usually come with sight glasses, of course. And luckily, somebody put a little service tag over here. But it's been converted to MO99 at some point in time. Now that sight glass looks... I can't really tell if it's full. But it looks kind of foggy, so... I don't really know what's up with that yet. But we're about to start troubleshooting stage number two. But that storm is getting closer. We're starting to get some lightning bolts. So I might not get a chance to get over to stage number two on this unit. The kitchen unit, right over here, also one of our warmer units. The condensing coil isn't too bad. Kind of brushed it off real quick, but it really needs to be thoroughly washed. Now, whether this in this pending storm is going to let me do that or not is, is another thing. I'm going to shut it off real quick. I already got my hose ran up here. I'm going to soak it in some microchannel safe chemical, wash it off, and see if that'll help them out. So. Here we are back at this unit with the dead condensing fan motor. My contactor's still not pulled in. I just noticed that we have a code number 15 on our, our control board, which if we go over here, if I can get my light to line up. Sorry about the lighting, guys. We're filming in real world conditions. So if you can see number 15 right there, high pressure open three times, so it's basically locked out our circuit number two. So I am going to just reset this I'm 99% sure it's because our condensing fan motor died. So there's a little black button here. We're going to hold it down to clear that code. It'll reset itself. And both stages of cooling should come on. I do have a call for second stage cooling. So. If you look in there now, our second stage is pulled in. Let me change some things around here, guys. See what our amp draw is on this beast. Quick plug on my meter here. I really do enjoy this meter. My meter uh, SC260. Looks like we're pulling about 14 amps on stage two. Got about 16 on stage one. Uh, keep in mind though, they just started back up a second ago. We're operating on one condensing fan motor. Now, another thing I kind of want to do because, well, I take that back. I don't want to do it until I replace that condensing fan motor. Once I replace that condensing fan motor and get my airflow back on this condensing coil, then I'll think about attaching my gauges. But right now, there's really no point. Until until I have proper airflow, no point. So now let's go over here and wash some coils. So what we're doing now is we're gonna just wet these coils on this kitchen unit first. Now we want to wet it before we apply any chemicals, kind of break up anything first, then we'll get some chemical on it. As you can tell, my water pressure here kind of sucks. I just it's just not very impressive, but it is what it is. Again, this is the real world. I got a little tiny bit of water pressure to work with. I'd like to have a little bit more, but 
Uh, this will do. Once I get some chemical on there, it'll help break things up a little bit. So, all right, let me get after it, guys. All right, so I just wanted to get a little bit of a little bit of footage showing you how to kind of foam a coil. It's not really rocket science, guys, but some guys do this differently than I do. I like to go from the top to the bottom. Sometimes I'll go from the bottom to the top. Really, I don't. I don't know. I'm sure there is a scientific way behind it, but this is just how I've kind of always done it. I like to go from the top to the bottom, let everything soak in, and then I just kind of follow it down as I go. There we go. Lighting conditions aren't too bad. Got my little spotlight set up to kind of show you what's going on here. But hey, this is real world conditions, right? Sometimes we work at night. All right, let me get after this. So now we got our coil completely foamed up. I'm gonna let it kind of just sit on there and start breaking up some of that grease. This condensing unit sits kind of close to a couple of exhaust fans, so, and those just spit out grease all day and this just kind of sucks it up, so. It's got some grease and stuff on there, not too terrible. So while that's doing that, let's go over here to this unit with the dead condensing fan motor and see what our supply temp is. It's not too terrible. We're just about down to 57.9. My return on this side was 78. So it's doing all it can. And again, we got a dead condensing fan motor, so it's not operating under ideal conditions, but it's better than nothing for now. All right, let's go spray off that coil. So, since I didn't have as good a water pressure as I'd like, I switched out my spray nozzles. This one's a little bit finer of a, of a stream of water, so it's gonna get in there and kinda push everything right through this microchannel coil. Now another thing we wanna mention is when I'm all done here, I don't know if it'll come up on camera, but you see how dirty our our, seal, our ceiling, our roof. I mean, all this crap that we're washing off in this coil, it's gonna land right down here on our roof, and when it dries up, it's gonna get stuck right back on this coil again, and we're gonna be back here a couple days later. Maybe not a couple days, but you get my point. Now, Mr. Chris Stevens from HVACR Videos there, I mean, he hammers this home all the time. It's kind of where I picked it up at and kind of made it a habit was because of him. So, if you guys get a chance out there, check out Chris Stevens' videos, HVACR videos. Some of the best videos online, hands down. I mean, if I could be maybe a quarter, quarter as good as he is, I'd be far better off. But, all right, guys, let me uh, get this coil rinsed off here. We'll get it turned back on. We'll get a supply and kind of see where we stand, all right? All right, so here's our kitchen unit. Condensing coil is all clean. I let it dry for about five, 10 minutes, kind of let everything drip off there before I powered it back on. Uh, I sprayed the roof off as best I could. It could have been a little bit better. I get it, but I'm in a hurry. and starting to thunder and lightning out here. I'm not making excuses, but had my situation been a little bit better, I would have probably sprayed off this entire roof got it nice and clean got all this garbage out of here so anyway our return air is about just a hair under 81 it's going down so let's switch this over here to our supply I know it's hard to see guys again real-world stuff here now with an 80 degree supply I would like to see 55 at least now and again this is just a rule of thumb of about a 20 degree difference between your return and your supply air temperatures um, I apologize I can't remember if it's Delta T or temperature split I get them confused all the time I know one of them is your supply air temperature versus your actual refrigerant temperature the actual evaporator temperature um, but again, going back to that uh, 20 degree split, the rule of thumb between your return and supply, 
that doesn't really take an account for the humidity level, heat load inside, uh, airflow. There is, it's just a rule of thumb, guys, okay? Um, sometimes it's it's dead on, sometimes it's it's not so quite, a, it's not as accurate as you'd like just because maybe it's uh, a high humidity in the building and it's gonna take a little bit, a little bit to pull all that moisture out of the air before it can actually cool the air down. So we're sitting at about 64, we'll give it another 10 minutes, see where we're at. All right guys, I just wanted to take a minute to recap Towards the end of that call, I didn't have much time to record anything. It was getting dark, storm was moving in. Um, so I couldn't really finish up the little bit I had to finish up. But just to recap that dining room unit that had the bad condensing fan motor. Uh, that one, I think I'm gonna just replace both those condensing fan motors. After I looked at that motor, it looks like it's original, just like the one that failed on us. So I'm gonna replace both of those. Now the reason I replaced both of those if it's not obvious it's because they're both the same age and I don't want to come back in a week or two because that other motor went out so I'm gonna replace both motors I'm also gonna replace the blades because they're about a dollar fifty and it's not worth my time to try to wrestle those blades off those old motors so I'm doing new motors new blades new capacitors the ice cube relays that power those fan motors um, and then we'll we'll kind of recheck everything. I'll make sure my supply is good. If need be, I'll attach gauges, check my charge, but I don't see anything else wrong with those units. Belts are good, everything else looked nice on them. Coils are clean now. Um, and that condensing coil on the kitchen unit, that's nice and clean. Our supply temp on that was a little bit high, but the return on that is still about, it was 82 at the time I took the supply of about 61-ish. Um, by the time I got my mess cleaned up, got back downstairs and checked the uh, temperature at the thermostat, it went down to about 77. So it's it's probably just been struggling all day to try to do anything and it's probably going to take a little while for it to actually, actually catch up with the heat load inside the building. I advised the manager not to let those units go into night setback mode. Uh, because here their night setback isn't uh, a normal or what I would call a normal night setback where it just goes up a few degrees uh, This place the units basically just go off fans circulate a little bit of air, but the units are basically off so The next day the unit you know when they come in and they turn the units on they're just kind of fighting and working just struggling to Cool the building down after they've been off all night So I advise the manager just to just to let them run overnight for now let them catch up and um We'll revisit this on a Monday. But that's all for now, guys. I hope you enjoy the video. I know the lighting and the audio, the quality wasn't the best this time, but uh, like I was saying the entire time, real world situation. Sometimes we work at night, we work in the dark, we work when it's storming. Um, so kind of give you a little bit of a glimpse into uh, some real world situations, all right? Hope you like it. Like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.